I, I was really wanting to, to work on this issue, and what I found then is I, I went to a lecture by Mark Tabard about a year ago in Fullerton, and he was talking, he was, you know, from Citizens Climate Lobby, and I decided to join Citizens Climate Lobby and really work with CCL on the issue of, of climate change. And so our mission is lobby Congress to pass legislation to solve the problem of climate change and make the earth livable for humans and to empower us, empower people so that we can succeed in, in doing this. So we've only been around, you know, for not too many years, but we already have 40,000 members. We have chapters all over the country, all over Canada. So this is an organization I highly recommend because we keep working in between meetings. We keep, you know, it's a really active group. And we just keep working in behind the scenes. And then we just get together second Saturday at 10 there in the church to see you know, how far we've come. So this is a great group. So our planet Earth, this oasis in space, this is a perfect place you know, on Earth, both for us humans and as you know, we have beautiful clean water, blue skies, wonderful green meadows, and, and beautiful forests. And this is this is such a beautiful planet, and yet the Earth has a really bad fever. Um, it's getting hot. What does it mean to have a bad fever? Well, it's it's overheated, and we know why. Because humans, us humans are burning too much carbon-based fuel, and it's releasing so much carbon dioxide that this is causing the heating of the planet. And it's it's like, for instance, if a person had a fever of 105 degrees Fahrenheit, and the temperature, you know, it doesn't seem like that many degrees hotter it is. It's enough that the biosphere is really sick. So we, we have to cure it planet. Nobody else can do it. It's very urgent. And so we're going to talk about, well, what are the effects? What does the science say about the cause? And what can we do about it? What's the solution? So the solution, divest from fossil fuels and invest in new solar energy. We have to lower the carbon dioxide level and this will make habitable for our children. So, so life is so resilient. Actually, life can come up through the cracks in the pavement, and although it seems really fragile, um, it's more powerful than death. But I have to say, well, this, this is not about the Earth. Uh, the Earth is going to be okay, really. The Earth has gone through stuff like this before. And what it's really about is Human life, human civilization is what's in danger. Life is going to keep on living in some form, but it's human life that we're really concerned about. So President Obama said, those who are already feeling the effects of climate change don't have to deny it. They're too busy dealing with it. And you know the litany of all these effects. And just to go through some of them. We know that the climate is changing and we're in the middle of actually the sixth extinction here on Earth. But this one being caused by humans. And a UCLA study said that approximately 20% of species could become extinct within the next few decades. And perhaps more after that, depending on what we do. Deserts expanding. Droughts, heat waves, um, and we know that, for instance, in Syria, there's about a million refugees who were there. Was, there was a big drought in 2011, and then it continued for four years. About 60 percent of the agricultural land was desertified. 80 percent of the livestock died. So these these farmers moved into the cities, but then because of dysfunctional politics, Assad did not have a government to take care of them, and so they, they're leaving. They, they have to go you know, to Europe, Turkey for their lives. They're, 
is the huge refugee crisis in this 